A 38-year-old male patient is brought into the emergency room with a four-day history of fever, cough, and now he is severely short of breath. On admission, the patient was tachycardic but maintained oxygen saturations with supplemental oxygen via a face mask. On auscultation, he had clear breath sounds but fast breathing. Blood work and a chest x-ray was done. The blood test revealed raised infection markers including a white cell count and CRP which was high and a lymphopenia with a raised prothrombin time. This was his chest x-ray on day one. It appears within normal limits. The patient is admitted and moved to the ward. His condition deteriorates on day three and his oxygen requirements are increasing. His chest x-ray is repeated and now shows coarse patchy opacification of both lower zones which appear inflammatory in nature. There is no focal collapse or consolidation. As is disease progressive, we now hear faint expiratory wheezing. He is moved to the ITU, where overnight the patient has invasive lines inserted for monitoring and he is now intubated and ventilated to assist his breathing. Day six, the patient continues to deteriorate. His latest chest x-ray shows the previously seen patchy opacities appear as areas of bilateral peripheral consolidations with air bronchograms. There is consolidation above the horizontal fissure, suggesting right upper lobe pneumonia. The left heart border is obliterated, suggesting left lower lobe pneumonia as well. The patient has an endotracheal tube, an NG tube, and internal jugular central vena catheter in situ. On auscultation of his chest, we now hear more fine crackles and bronchial harsh breath sounds. Day eight, his respiratory symptoms continue to worsen as the patient clinically deteriorates despite maximum support in ITU. His chest x-ray shows progressive bilateral ground glass opacities affecting both lungs, more prominent in the upper lobes and paramediastinal parenchyma. On auscultation, we hear coarser crackles and diffuse ronchi. The patient passed away later that night. What are the learning points from this case? Well, many people with coronavirus infection are asymptomatic. The signs and symptoms of COVID-19 are generally non-specific, but in symptomatic individuals most commonly include fever in 85 to 90% of people, cough in 65 to 70%, fatigue in 35 to 40%, and shortness of breath in 15 to 20%. The definitive test is the real-time reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction, RT-PCR test. It is a highly specific test, but with a low sensitivity, thus false negatives are a clinical problem and several negative tests may be required in a single case to be confident about excluding the disease. This patient in this case had a throat swab testing with RT-PCR. These were negative twice before testing positive for coronavirus on the third day of admission. The findings of the initial chest x-ray are subtle and there is a rapid and significant progression on the follow-up radiographs. Healthcare staff need to be mindful of subtle changes when patients present, particularly given the lag between the RT-PCR test on admission and the result availability. In terms of blood tests, common markers that could suggest a COVID-19 infection include a lymphopenia, increased prothrombin time, increased LDH, and mild rise in inflammatory markers including white cells, CRP, and ESR. Radiographic findings commonly include patchy opacifications with this classic ground glass appearance.